Okay, my chair is sliding away from the desk as usual here. So. Oh yeah, you put those super rollers on it. <laughs> Silly you. With the tilted floor. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Buckle yourself in. Hey, thanks for downloading Garden Fork Radio. You're here with Eric and my good friend Rick. Hey, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Eric. A uh, rare afternoon conversation for us. That's because I couldn't get my act together until 3.30 today. So. Well, and I had appointments this morning, and uh, uh, we're in the middle of doing uh, some storm prep, just in case. Which is the topic of our show today. If, if people haven't heard, uh, there's a storm out there called Dorian, and uh, when the skies get gray, you'll have uh, the portrait of Dorian Gray. Yeah. Hey, if this is your first time here, Garden Fork Radio is a very eclectic how-to DIY, wide-ranging show. It's the hot mess of DIY. How's that for a description? Yeah. I really enjoyed your latest uh, video, by the way, repairing the uh, the sparking in your hammer drill. Yeah, that it actually, uh, well, I, wanna ru I don't want to ruin the ending for everyone, but... Um, this is, it's a good ending. It fi Something finally worked. Yeah. Well, actually, several yeah. commenters were like, wow, it's so nice to see something actually worked for once. <laughs> <laughs> but it, typical of me, I, my hammer drill broke. I bought the parts to fix it. And then it sat on my workshop table for how long? Until mm. the other day when I needed my hammer drill. Uh, I have to mount a water pump in my basement. And so I wanted that up off the floor. And then I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll fix the drill real quick. And I'm like, I should really make a video about this. So that makes the repair take three times as long, but it ended up being a pretty good video, I thought. Yeah, lots of color, lots of sparks. There is uh, one gentleman who commented who used to repair and work with DC motors, electrical mm -hmm. DC current motors, and quite a paragraph, a very long paragraph on the YouTube channel um, about motors in general and stuff. And so the brushes, I thought they actually touched the brass of the commutator, it's called. Mm -hmm. They hover right above it. Oh, really? Yeah. The spring doesn't push it down onto the... Uh, the spring, on I thought it did, but he said that the... There's something that causes an electrical charge that pushes the brushes just off the commutator. Well, then how come the brushes eventually wear down? I don't know. That's that's a deep question, Rick. Yeah, because I maybe a I real podcast done, should answer that. Yeah, I've done things like that, and it's you know it's because the uh, the uh, brushes that that carbon has worn down so far that the actual copper spring is is hitting the commutator. Right, I've had the same thing. I guess the carbon wears off after it's. A, where is Scientist Tony when we need him? So. That's right, Garden Fork Scientist Tony, uh, who's doing quite well, by the way. He had some medical issues, that uh, uh, he's uh, in treatment and doing uh, doing great, going to ball games. So good for him, yeah, good on him. Have a beer and a hot dog. Well, we'll have someone's yelling back at the podcast about it's an AC motor, so I don't know it's different than DC, but anyway, it was. It was nice to fix something, and then I had my hammer drilled back. I'll link. I'm kind of a evangelist about this very affordable name brand uh, hammer drill that I will link to in the show notes. It'll be an affiliate link, of course, because uh, that's who I am. But um, I have beat that drill into the ground. I actually own two of two of them. And when I was in my contracting business, I hung a ton of flat screen TVs on brick walls in Brownstone, Brooklyn. Uh, because people would try and do it themselves and then they'd call me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's the hammer part of the hammer drill that really helps out there. Yes, it's a percussive action and you need percussive masonry, not masonry, as I usually say, drill bits to go along with that. And read the instructions. And practice on somebody else's wall first. Yeah. Actually, yeah. a little, before we talk about hurricane prep, when you're going to start to drill with a hammer drill, Put it in non-hammer mode and drill very slowly and you'll start a little bit 
of a pilot hole or um, you know, like when you're going to drill in the metal, you take a nail or a punch and you make a little dimple for mm-hmm. the, so the drill doesn't wander. Same thing if you're going into stone or masonry or ceramic. Put it in regular drill mode and a tiny little dimple and then switch to hammer drill because otherwise the hammer drill will jump and you can scrape the hammer drill bit across the face of your very nice marble. Mm. There you go. So it sounds like somebody that's had experience. Someone has done that. In yeah. This yeah. podcast. Yeah. It has, it's not me. Let me tell you, friend. Uh, today, today is toilet fixing day, by the way. Before the hurricane. Yeah. Well, just, you know, one of those uh, nuts, you know, nagging unfinished task that uh, need to get done. And then you feel better afterward. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to listen to it running. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a hurricane coming up the East Coast. Uh, Rick is in its path. My father-in-law, who lives at the North Carolina, he lives near Wilmington, basically. Mm -hmm. He is in the path. And um, the New York Times had an article about hurricane preparation, even though the New York Times is in New York City. But I consider them a national newspaper. So. um, Oh, yeah. Well, and uh, to be real honest, we're not in the path. We're in the cone of uncertainty. Yes, and that uh, we're just it's we're about to get sideswiped here in Margaritaville North, I think. But uh, it could, you know, literally run right over us. And I am just continually amazed that uh, they can make these kind of predictions at all, much less have a, um, a, a cone of uncertainty that essentially is uh, maybe 100 miles left or right of, of the uh, – the track of the storm. That's pretty good. Uh, I am just amazed. I, uh, I think I mentioned uh, in the past. Uh, I can remember as a young child in Texas, uh, we were literally surprised by hurricanes uh, uh, that would just roll ashore and nobody knew they were even coming. Oh wow! And so, uh, and uh, you know, or they'd see it on, uh, they'd see it approaching on. Uh, um, uh, radar, air traffic control radar, and they uh, see it out maybe a hundred miles or two hundred miles, and they had no idea it was coming through the Gulf. So, uh, you know, it's it's just amazing that uh, you know, we have this technology, and I I get pretty perturbed with people that blame the weather service for you know little errors of left right or you know three feet two feet right. that kind of thing. It, it I mean it, we have just come so terribly far that uh, I, I am just continually amazed in those people. Unfortunately, we also have uh, fake news moving into the hurricane prediction business because there are amateur meteorologists that have their own theories and uh, maybe right or wrong about things, and they publish their own storm path, and they make it look very official. Right. And then that gets through a multiplier of social media um, gets multiplied, and all of a sudden, people think it's legitimate. Well, and there were a lot of uh, pictures of uh, supposedly of uh, uh, from the uh, Abacos, the uh, uh, Bahama area, and that were published, and they were terrible looking pictures, but they weren't from Bahamas at all. And uh, I don't quite understand the mindset of people that do things like that. Uh, I deplore them. You can actually use Google Image Search on your phone. Mm-hmm. You can. You have to enable Google Image Search to access your camera, but you can take a picture of an image and then do Google Image Search, and it will show you the origin of it um, right. as best it can and see where it has been reposted. Right. There's another one, uh, 10i, uh, that uh, does the same thing, and it's, it's pretty good, too. So you can check the veracity. Yeah. You know, you know what I read is coming to uh, both... Uh, our videos and our, our pictures is they're going to start using blockchain so that you can actually verify that you took this picture with your camera at this certain time and date. And uh, so all this uh, future worry about manipulated video and and uh, which is some of it is looking very real. Right. Now, uh, you can actually look at the uh, blockchain attached to that and tell whether or not it's been manipulated. And I think that's a wonderful idea. That is good. I've actually been very troubled by that. All right. So yeah. what generators, raking your leaves, what are you doing? 
Oh, the very first thing you do anytime a storm approaches, this is absolutely necessary. You go and you grind as much coffee as you think you'll need. Ah. <laughs> I, that's that. You do that first because there is nothing worse than being stuck in a storm and the power's out and you got a sack of beans and a hammer trying to make coffee in the morning. Was that so you? I, <laughs> I, uh, I did that once, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just do the uh, common sense things. Be, do the good neighbor thing. Uh, make sure all your lawn furniture is in and tied or tied down. Make sure that uh, your trash cans are secured. Um, you know, at least you won't have to go chasing them down the street. And, uh, you know, a, a, a toy or a lawn implement or a, 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 you know, I've seen trampolines, pictures of trampolines oh, yeah. flying. Yeah. And then landing in the power lines and killing the power for the entire block. Um, you know, just... Go ahead. Be a good, be a good neighbor. There is a picture on the New York Times site, which is a very good uh, section on the hurricane, of in the bah- I think it's in the Bahamas or one of the islands down there. A hotel takes all their uh, furniture, the furniture around the pool, the recliners and stuff, the outdoor, uh-huh. and they put them in the pool. Good idea, because yep. it's underwater, Just- so the wind can't lift it up and fling it into the windows of their hotel. And then uh, out back, uh, we took our um, tables that we have on the deck and turned them upside down so the glass is uh, against the deck and kind of secured them in a corner. So, uh, you know, they won't go airborne either. Right. So yeah, just just do common sense stuff like that. Take the umbrella in. Take the umbrella in. We've taken our umbrella in. The, uh, you know, the other things you need to do is just be self-sufficient. Uh, you know, be able to take care of yourself for two or three or four days. And that's, you know, a matter of having food on hand, uh, maybe food you don't have to cook, stuff you can eat out of your can. Make sure you have a can opener that's not electric. Holy cow, I never thought of that. (laughs) Uh, I've known people who have made errors like that. Uh, Don't think that you have to go out and get a generator. Uh, and if you do have to get, think you can afford a generator, don't think that you have to get a, a really big one that will run your whole house. You know, we talked about your sister's uh, uh, air conditioner, how you fried a circuit. Yes. Uh, trying to light uh, her uh, air conditioner off of her generator. And yeah, you just don't do that. Fig- yeah, you didn't figure the starting load. Right. This, so- the amperage needed to turn on the whole house air conditioner is 50 50- almost twice as much if it's running amperage. So the generator could not put out enough amps to get the motor, the compressor motor started. Now, no. I do know there is a um, condenser that you can, uh, auxiliary, you can mount on the air conditioner unit itself that will give it a kick for that um, for that load. Oh. And so you can, you can do it, but you have to do extra work. But you can also do what I did, which is just set up the master bedroom for a uh, to run the generator and a little window mount air conditioner. Yeah. And uh, we uh, run the circuits inside. And then I kind of run a cord out to the refrigerator. And there you so go. that, you know, that'll keep us going. But that's that's the poor man's way of uh, trying to get, um, you know, keep a little bit of power. And frankly, the only reason we do that is uh, she who must be obeyed and uh, myself both have uh, CPAP machines, you know, breathing machines for at night because we both have sleep apnea. And so uh, we got the generator for that. Uh, Otherwise, I don't think we'd bother. We we survived a lot of storms in Guam uh, with uh, without a generator and did fine. Yeah, and you live to tell live to tell a story. Yeah. Now the other thing to do is to um, you know if you get your food and your water and all that sorted out, make sure you got your, uh, meds on hand for uh, three or four days. Uh, take care of your animals. Um, if you want, take care of your kids. You know, <laughs> and uh, make sure they have everything they're going to need. And then do the one thing that's re- probably going to help you a lot if you're going to be out of power for a long time, which is wash all your clothes and dry them now. Oh. And uh, and start off fresh because uh, uh, two or three days of uh, ripe laundry in the house uh, will be quite unpleasant to deal with all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had not thought about that. 
I had not thought about that. And then probably the last thing is before things get really hectic, uh, go fill up the cars and then you and the dogs and the kids, everyone go get some exercise, burn off a lot of energy because you're going to be uh, cooped up together for quite a while with no opportunity to burn off any energy, any uh, energy. Yeah, that um, people kind of forget that. Yeah, yeah. And then always think about leaving. Yeah. Uh, they, they have a, a – uh, I, I got um, uh, from the city of Virginia Beach. They sent me a, uh, an email that says, you know, gave me all these things that you, you ought to think about doing. And one of them is if you leave the area – you need to tell people you're leaving the area. So if your uh, roof comes off or your house caves in or, or whatever happens, uh, they'll know not to look for you. And so whenever anybody asks me, are you leaving? I said, well, if we do, we'll be at the Bellagio. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the dogs in the carrier and we'll go get a flight. And we'll just get out of the way because why be part of the problem? Uh, no person can handle a four by eight sheet of plywood in a uh, 120 mile an hour breeze. Uh, nobody's going to be able to uh, get on their roof and uh, and stretch it up one of those blue tarps and nail it down in a 100 mile an hour breeze. Uh, there is very little you can actually do in your house once the storm has started if things go badly. So just get out of the way. Go yep. visit family. Go visit friends. Uh, do not be part of the problem. Well, I have a big suggestion is um, go to the ATM and get some money out. Yes. I think because I'm kind of a prepper, you should just have some money in your house all the time. And, uh, you know, I mean, the world is becoming more and more cashless. But after when the storm goes and knocks everything out, people's credit cards aren't going to work. And then if you want to buy some bottled water, if you have singles and fives, people will sell you that bottled water. That's right. Uh, I keep a, um, a, uh, milk container, big, you know, one of the half gallons with lid with the top cut off on my, uh, dresser. And, uh, for years I've been throwing handfuls of change in there just having, you know, so you always have quarters and pennies and dimes and yeah. nickels and stuff. And, um, you know, even a, a, a 20 sometimes is hard to get rid of in the aftermath of the storm. Nobody can break it for you. And so uh, having lots of small bills and loose change around is a really good idea. And if you're wondering how you could hide that money, here's how. You go to hollowbooks.com and, oh, and okay. order a hollow book, a custom carved hollow book by the executive producer of Garden Fork Radio, Jimmy Goots. See? Wow. He gave me Way one. Way to go, guy. So he gave me one and... Um, I put some money in it. I won't tell you where or how or what the book says. And I completely forgot about it. And then six months later, I went near that area where the book was and I opened it up and there was an awful lot of money in there. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, this is like found money. I could go buy yeah. something. <laughs> so you don't have to have a safe, um, they do make those fireproof little boxes, but, um, you know, when people break into your house, they're going to find the fireproof box and walk off with it. If you just have a book, you know, so, um, yeah, hollowbooks.com and tell them that Eric sent you. So there you go. Yeah, there's, um, you know, there are all kinds of things you can do, but, uh, mostly, you know, when I, when I think about storms and I think about the, the very worst thing that can happen, you know, the, the house actually coming apart, tornado hit it or something. I always remember that my favorite footwear for them is uh, our hiking boots with a steel sole. Mm. Um, because you need to be able to get out and, um, you know, move debris and, uh, you know, cl maybe climb your way out. And so uh, I'll probably be wearing my hiking boots with the steel soles if things start looking pretty tough, just in case, um, you know, we have to walk out or, or uh, have some sort of emergency we have to deal with. Last thing you want is a big rusty nail going through the bottom of your foot. Yeah, don't wear flip-flops. <laughs> yeah, no flip-flops. If you do have a generator, uh, buy some gas and put gas stabilizer in it. Uh, I don't care what brand you use. They all – people – 
argue about it a lot on the <laughs> internet. The red stuff works, the blue stuff works, the sea foam stuff. I don't know. I'm not quite sure if that works, but the red brand and the blue brand both work. Uh, I've used both of them and I fired up my generator the other day. It started on the second pull. And when you uh, set up your generator, point the exhaust away from your house. Yeah. And, and never, ever fire a generator in your uh, garage or carport or basement. anything, anything, you know, basement, anything attached to your house. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, every year have problems. Uh, uh, they kill uh, their dying. families. <laughs> Yeah. That will happen, you know, to, if there's power lost in this storm, it, it will more than likely happen. So. And if you have a generator, be sure and shut off the main circuit breaker to your house where you, the uh, weather head is, where the power comes into your house. Because if you don't, you're feeding current down the line and you may hurt a linesman um, trying to restore power to your neighborhood because you didn't do the right thing. Right. We have a couple of videos about this, actually. Um and my most recent video, which I will link to here, is a very simple way to safely hook up your generator to the breaker panel. And an electrician, there's a bunch of people that yell at me saying I'm doing it wrong. But then there's an electrician that commented the other day, he goes, I've been an electrician for X number of years, and this is a very good video. I was like, oh. See? Because I, I followed the rule. I followed the the logic of the uh, uh the, it's a manual transfer switch, but what, the, what? I can't remember the name of the thing. Anyway, it'll be in the show notes here, what I'm rambling about. <laughs> you know, people wonder sometimes about us, I think. We both, when you, as soon as we hit the go button on the microphone, we both just get brain freezes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we are not natural conversationalists, I don't think. You know who is, is Will Wallace. Oh, man, the, the human dynamo. Uh, for everyone new to the show, Will Wallace has a YouTube channel called The Weekend Homestead, and he had he bought a camper resort in northern Wisconsin and renamed it the Bear Paw Resort, and it's been successful beyond his dreams, and he's expanding it, and he is slammed with projects. So uh, if you go to uh, the Bear Paw Resort on Facebook, you can get updates about what he's doing. He'll be back on the show. Um, I talked to him the other day, and... He was wrangling with an excavator, <laughs> but he, I think he's the kind of guy that doesn't not very good at sitting still. So it, he'll. I think that might be true. Yeah. After this camping camper season, resort season, uh, he'll be back on to talk about the do's and don'ts and um, interesting, uh, interesting stuff. I Me, mean, you know, just you know, no project he won't take on. I wished he'd taken my suggestion though, because I wanted him to call it the Bloody Bear Paw. Okay. <laughs> I thought that would be a really great name for a camp. It kind of be a horror camp for kids. All right. Um, I have some good news. We have and? some recent reviews on the iTunes Garden Fork radio page. See, the begging helps. Yeah. Yeah. There's three of them. I'm going to read them, okay? Please do. The first is from Airedale Mike, who I know, and he's said nice things about us before. Educational and fun, five stars. This podcast inspires me and makes me smile. Well, <laughs> thank you, Air Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next is by CC in Indiana. Great show, five stars. Been listening for a long time. Very informative and fun to listen to. There you go. Another good one. Uh, N D H V H A N. Um, sometimes I can figure these out, but that one I can't. Anyway, love it, five stars. I've been a listener since the early years. Oh, oh. And, oh, wow. And I still look forward to every episode and YouTube video. I love the authenticity of Eric's approach. Done is better than perfect, is heard throughout, and you are left feeling encouraged and empowered to go out and try new things. Yay. Okay, we're going to have to write a, a, a thank you note the back of a $20 bill for that one. <laughs> the podcast guests are always fun, too. I truly enjoy every episode, even when it's something I wouldn't normally be interested in. There's just something about the way Garden Fork does it that makes it interesting and enjoyable. Keep up. The great work, Eric and crew. Oh, so she signed it. Oh, it's from Melissa. So there you go. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. Well, thank you, Melissa. Also, I got an email from uh, someone this morning. Um, let me find it on my phone here. Here, why don't we sing while I'm finding this thing? Um, brain. I thought you were doing a, a chicken invitation. Oh, it's from Chris. Let's say Chris S., let's just say. Okay. And uh, he was like, 
Are you ever going to put out a new podcast? <laughs> 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 Miss hearing your and Mike and Will's escapades, a loyal listener, Chris. So I wrote him back and I said, yes, it'll post later today. And he said, LOL, you the man. So thank you, Chris. Chris S. Okay. Yeah, I, I noticed he didn't say anything about me. Um, yeah, he said. Uh, I'm crushed. No, he said, Will, oh, Mike. Mike. He probably confused you and Mike. Scott, Chris, it's, Chris, get, it's easy get to back to me. Profile. Get yeah. back to me with an apology for Mr. <laughs> Sensitive there. And I was at our town fair this weekend. And oh, I am. French, Mr. French Fry. I am right. That's because we couldn't record the show the other day because I was making French fries for six hours. But we have a town fair. I live in a small town in Northwest Connecticut. And um, the fair is like this big event for everyone to come meet before winter sets in. And I'm in the back. I'm behind the Lions Club tent. You know, it's still open and I'm making fries and fries. And um, my friend who was manning the um, hamburger grill said, Eric, Someone wants to talk to you. And it's this tall guy. And I walk over. I'm like, hi. He goes, he goes, you're Eric. I'm like, yeah. He goes, he goes, oh, I watch all your shows. I'm like, oh, great. You know, so we talked for a little bit. Um, his name is Robin. And uh, he said he has a YouTube channel. So I'm looking it up right now. Robin Lauer. There he is, Robin Lauer. Solo okay. canoe trips in northern Ontario. Solo. Ontario. Yeah, solo canoe trips in northern Ontario. Canoe, deer camps, and small slow tents. So Robin, R-O-B-I-N, and then Lauer, L-A-U-E-R. Okay. You know, that's the difference between you and me. When somebody says there, there's somebody here that wants to talk to you, you're interested and happy. I always think it's a service process, you know, a process server <laughs> of some sort, you know? <laughs> So, or somebody with a warrant, you know, <laughs> Mr. Kennerly, put yeah. out your put out your hands, please. <laughs> your yeah. hand, hands behind your back, please. <laughs> so. My father was arrested in the front yard of the house while he was mowing the lawn once. So, really, yep. Wow. For what? <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, I actually, I actually had my brother-in-law arrested off the uh, front porch once. Right, but that's a sad story. So, oh, anyway, well, no, I, I actually I was pretty happy. Right. About it. Well, go check out Robin, Robin Lauer. And he got to meet the camera operator because he there's a pet contest at the town thing. And um, they have dogs and cats, but then people have like ducks and geese and goats and chickens. And so his grandkids were raising chickens. So they had a big looked like a big dog kennel on a wagon and they had the chickens in there with straw bedding. They were very comfortable and they hung around for a really long time. So I said, um, I said, Oh, if the camera operator comes, Robin, I'll, I'll, I'll bring over to you. So and it was all of 30 feet away cause it's a small town fair. So, um, so he got to meet the camera operator. So there you go. Well, certainly the better half. Yeah. She is delightful. I got to tell you. When are you coming back through? You, uh, well, maybe with the storm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to knock on my door and I'll be like, no one's home. We're gone. Uh, that would be he, scary. He, he lives. No, he doesn't. He, he does not live here anymore. <laughs> really? I'll jump out the back. Uh, Yikes. Oh, OK. Well, I bet you we have just about exhausted people's patience with our silliness. Yes. <laughs> By the way, I, um, I thought I we were done. I, no, I, I just realized this. I had an incident on my bike the other day. Oh. And, um, I mean, it wasn't terrible. First of all, there's an awful lot of automotive jackassery that goes around. Uh, hear about people and bikes and not seeing them. And I almost got picked off at a corner. And when I slammed on the brakes and kind of skidded sideways my head went into the fence but i was wearing a uh, a helmet yay yay and the helmet split right down the middle well they're designed to do that yeah but then i went to the consumer's report eric and i are always singing the praises of consumer report yeah and uh saw that they had tested helmets 
And the helmet that I was wearing, they tested at 27. 27 what? Well, whatever points they use. Oh. The very best helmet was a uh, 89. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm lucky I lived. Yeah, the, uh, um, the helmet's designed to take the impact and disperse it into the styrofoam. Is that right? Is yeah, that... But, but now there's a whole new system of mounting. It's, it's called MIPS, M-I-P-S, and I forget what it stands for. But it's a way of securing from impact in a lot of different directions and to keep it, the lid from being pulled off. And, and uh, they make a, a whole lot of much better helmets now. And so I am ordering a, uh, a top of the line helmet. Uh, after that, I know, I know you, it, it's single use. And I knew that, you know, one, one impact, you're supposed to get rid of the helmet. Right. But, but it's worth uh, it. I, yeah. Yeah. But I, when that happened, I was just a little unnerved. Yeah. I ride my bike in New York city and unfortunately bike deaths are on the rise here. Um, and they did a big clamp down in my neighborhood cause there was a bike accident and, they were pulling cars over left and right and trucks. It was interesting to see um, mm. why, why they don't do that more. I, I don't know. I guess our police are understaffed or overregulated or, or something. Um, well, you know, there was an article in, I think, Time the other day that said that uh, uh, pedestrian deaths are up in the United States. Mm. And I, I really think it's distracted driving. Oh, good uh, point. Yeah. Yeah, people looking down at their phone or, or something, and they just kind of clip a pedestrian. And uh, they're not too hardy, those pedestrians. They're really fragile. All right, everyone, wear your helmets. So Wear your helmet and wear a good helmet. Yeah. All right, so I will link to some helmets. I will link to the hammer drill and free hollow books, which is type freehollowbooks.com. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jimmy Goots is there. And... Uh, let us know your thoughts and feelings. It's radio at gardenfork.tv, all right? Yeah, it's, but it's it's not free hollow books. It's just hollow books, right? Well, it's both. Really? If you just type in hollowbooks.com, it'll take you there. But he, it read it, he started it's several iterations of website names, but he's now hollowbooks.com. Okay. He's yelling at me. He texts me a lot, you know, the, the executive producer. So he, he's going to yell at me. Okay. That's all right. You deserve it. Thank you. I mean, you're a husband. You can take it. All right. Go out and make it a great day, everyone. And we will be back next week. Okay. And uh, you guys hide out from the portrait of Dorian Gray. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, my friend. Bye-bye. Garden Fork Radio's executive producer is Jimmy Goots of hollowbooks.com. And our music is licensed from uniquetracks.com. 